1972 and living in America isn't as great as it used to be. The war in Vietnam is still going on, the spread of communism is as threatening as ever, and inflation is making prices go up for basically the first time since World War II. Oh well, at least you have a pretty good president. Richard Nixon seems determined to get things done even in the present situation. He created a plan for withdrawing troops from Vietnam, he relaxed tensions with China and the Soviet Union, and he created the Environmental Protection Agency. It's no wonder he wins his re-election campaign in a landslide against Democratic candidate George McGovern. No one seems concerned with the news of a break-in at Democratic headquarters in the Watergate office complex. Two men were concerned, however, Washington Post reporters Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward. They published a series of articles which eventually implicate Richard Nixon and his team as being involved in the burglary. Their story is made into a book and then later into a movie called All the President's Men. The Senate launches some hearings led by Senator Sam Irvin. They accuse the president of planning and covering up the break-in. During the hearings, it's revealed that Nixon had tape-recorded nearly every conversation while in his office. The Senate committee asks to listen to the tapes, and Nixon declines, setting executive privilege. The breaking goes on for a while until the Supreme Court steps in and says that since Nixon may have committed a crime, executive privilege doesn't apply. So Nixon has to turn the tapes over, and it becomes pretty clear that he was involved in the burglary and generally a bad person, so he resigns. This leads to Gerald Ford becoming president, despite the fact that he was never elected but appointed after Nixon's original vice president resigned. Ford promptly pardons Nixon for whatever he may have done, then loses the war in Vietnam, then loses the election to Jimmy Carter. And that's why today every political scandal ends in gate.